Howdy Moz fans, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. I'm Cyrus Shepard. Today we're going to be talking about the death of keyword ranking reports. Now we all do keyword ranking reports, we've been doing them for several years. I do them, I still do them today. Uh, but I'm talking to a lot of agencies, a lot of big time agencies, that are actually starting to turn the t corner and stop delivering those keyword ranking reports to clients. And there's a lot of reasons for that, and a lot of them have to do with recent changes with Google. But a lot go back to just the deficiencies that keyword ranking reports have always had. So we've all got these emails uh, in our inbox, every single one of us, that promise number one rankings for a number of really obscure keywords. And that goes to the point that th these keyword ranking reports may not be reflecting metrics that are important to either your SEO campaign or your business objectives. Uh, the big problem is, anytime you rank a keyword, you don't know if that keyword is sending you traffic. And if you, back in the days when we actually had uh, key keyword data in Google Analytics, you could see that the keywords you were tracking only comprised a small portion of the keywords that uh, you were actually ranking in your keyword ranking report. You were actually missing out on 50 to 80% of that data. So no matter how good your keyword ranking report is, it's, it's always going to be missing a, a lot of that essential traffic. And it completely misses the long tail, uh, which is another problem because generally when you do keyword ranking reports, you're generally choosing those high traffic or you're trying to choose those high traffic terms. And you're, again, you're missing out on a huge portion of that traffic that's sending you, that's sending you uh, those numbers. Hummingbird, big changes this year in Google where, where what you type in, the keyword that users type in, may be actually sort of rewritten in certain ways uh, by Google. And we're, see them, we're seeing more and more instances of Google returning results that don't actually contain all of the keywords you type in. It'll be pretty close, but if you're tracking this, this keyword and it's, not, it's being sort of rewritten or triggering different results by Google, it, does, it makes it slightly less valuable to be reporting on every week. And also, changes in SERPs. Uh, Google's, if you look at Dr. Pete's recent post, the mega SERP, you can see all these different uh, SERP features that Google is introducing that sort of make positions irrelevant. Uh, you know, in the, in the traditional keyword ranking, if you're ranking number one, that, that guaranteed like 18, 19% of your traffic. You know, that, but then if the SERP has a lot of ads, it has a lot of photos in it, ads on the side, a number one or two ranking might be less meaningful. Then again, if you have something like an author photo, uh, Google did a study, one of their own studies, showing how that can greatly inf impact uh, click-through. And a number four ranking, a number five, six, seven, can have a higher click-through result than a number one ranking. So for this reason and a lot of other reasons, uh, keyword ranking reports are just simply dying. Now it's still important to track those keywords, but what we do with that information is changing. So I'm going to talk about some different things that we should be reporting to our clients, reporting to our bosses, and reporting to ourselves for better SEO results. The first thing, this idea was introduced to me first by A.J. Cohn. I'll link to his post uh, in the uh, transcription below. But it's the idea of a keyword index. And you can do this with lots of different tools. You can do it with mods. You can do it with uh, advanced web ranking. You can do it with most good keyword ranking tools. And that is you can create keyword groups. And so let's say these were my keywords here, iPhone case, iPhone speaker. I would create a group of keywords, checking all the boxes, where I'm tracking a, just the words with iPhone in them. And then I can get a metric, I can pull them out into a spreadsheet and just get one number that shows me if I'm moving up and down for keywords that contain iPhone. Now the huge advantage of this system is it gets the long tail. Because I know if my keyword index is going up for iPhone, that those long tail keywords that I'm not tracking are likely going up and down too. It's not going to be a one-to-one -one relationship. They're not all going to go up and down at the same time. But I know in general that I'm capturing a much broader sense of where my keywords are performing. And it also simplifies it because instead of tracking 50 keywords, I'm just tracking one index. That's the number I'm reporting. My iPhone visibility in the SERPs is increasing or decreasing. And that's something that the client is going to care about. Uh, a better metric to report to clients, reach. Now, a lot of us already report organic search traffic. Uh, we do it in our weekly reports. And that's traditionally been the SEO's realm, right? Organic search traffic, we report it. But this is really a lot more important than this. But something I'm going to encourage you to start doing, 
that's something a lot of SEOs are uncomfortable with, is also reporting a lot of other traffic, such as referral traffic. Because if you think about it, if your content is earning links, if it's getting shares and mentions, that means it's going to be coming through those referral links and not through Google or Bing or that organic traffic. Not that you have to take credit for all that referral traffic, but you certainly influence it. And it's important to the client, it's important to the boss, so you should be reporting it. The same with social traffic. Even if you have a social department in your company or business or there's other social people that are responsible for those metrics, you should be reporting it too because everybody contributes together. If you're doing your job as an SEO and your content becomes more popular, of course it's going to be shared more and it's a synergistic relationship between all those departments working together, but it's definitely something you want to report because again it's something uh, that's important to the client and it's something that you had a part in. And in general, what, what everybody really cares about is that totality of traffic. And if you can relate that to your efforts, then you're going to be much more highly rewarded and you're going to have a better, better experience. So after reach, endorsements. And endorsements is a broad word uh, that we use for what Google is looking for. We say Google is looking for links, but that's not really true if you think about uh, Penguin and the way they discount links. Uh, what they're really looking for is editorial endorsements. And this can take different, different ways of links, mentions, local citations, uh, press mentions, social authority. If you can report these, it's sort of like you're, you're reporting on your good marketing skills. Uh, so you can use, this, use a lot of different tools to do this every week. We use Fresh Web Explorer. It's, it's a paid tool here at, here at Moz, but there are, there are different uh, other tools that you can use, such as mentions.net. And we, we actually rank all the new links that we've seen during that week uh, through Fresh Web Explorer. You can do it through Open Site Explorer, any of your favorite link building to link tools, Majestic, AREFs. The benefit of reporting endorsements is it actually not only, do, not only does your boss or client like it, but for you, it actually makes you a little better at your job because it creates an SEO feedback loop. When you see uh, your new links and your new mentions coming in through these various tools, that gives you an opportunity to either reach out to the people and form a relationship or uh, leave a comment or find new link building opportunities, find new social authorities, and it strengthens the whole thing and it actually in improves your visibility overall. Finally, the most important thing you can report are your KPIs. Because this is what the boss, the client, and you care about the most. Your business objectives. Uh, in Google Analytics, maybe it's your goals, your conversions, and your assisted conversions. We're often scared to report these as SEOs, as inbound marketers, because we feel like we only had a small part to do uh, with those metrics. There's an entire sales team. There's an entire website. There's a development team. But these are the most important things. The, this is the, what we're trying to achieve, and we shouldn't be scared of reporting them. Um, if you can show how your efforts resulted in achieving these KPIs, those are the SEOs, those are the inbound marketers that make more money and get raises. And it's not about claiming all the credit, it's about sharing the credit and taking, taking claim for your part uh, in those actions and showing the client, showing your boss how you helped achieve those things. So keep, keep reporting, the, keep measuring those keywords, but let's, uh, let's say goodbye to those individual keyword reports. That's all everybody, thank you very much.